in Florida, 89 degrees. So if you're practicing and you're here in Florida joining me, feel welcome to wear anything that's comfortable, shorts and a little top, so you're comfortable in this nice, humid, beautiful, tropical weather. If you're new to the practice of yoga and you joined last week for the first time, what you might be feeling after you tried that class is a little bit of muscle soreness. So a lot of people have the idea that you know yoga is all about peace and relaxation. The vehicle to get you into peace and relaxation is experiencing that deep inner body. So it's totally normal to feel sore. The first time I ever did a yoga class, I jumped into a full two hour Ashtanga yoga practice. So I woke up the next day sore in every muscle, and muscles that I didn't even know that I had were totally screaming to me. So you might have felt that next last week. The perfect antidote or the cure for that yoga soreness the day after is more yoga. So whatever you think you know about the practice of yoga, if you think it's just easy and relaxation or if you think it's just for women, then you want to start taking these classes every week with me. And we'll be doing that once a week, mostly on Mondays, but be sure to follow me and Miami TV on Twitter so you can find the real schedule. So last week we focused on strength. You may have felt some strength in the shoulders or you may have felt some strength coming into your upper body, into the back muscles, into your core muscles. This week we're going to focus on opening up the back and getting the combination of strength and flexibility. Now when you begin to practice yoga, it feels wonderful to open your heart, to open your mind. We can only grow as much as our mind and our spirit really allow us to be open to that new experience. If you're locked down and your body's all tight, then you might not actually be you know, free enough in your mind to transform or to evolve. So one of the greatest blessings of the yoga practice is that open, free spirit. Backbending is the perfect tool in order to get that uh, energy flowing inside of your body. Now you don't need any particular warm-up to come and do yoga. All you need is to sit down and get started. Yoga itself is the perfect perfect warm-up. It actually brings this combination of the deep breathing with the posture and the focal point. So you don't need any particular warm-up. In fact, it's a great way to settle your body before any other activity. Um, it also helps concentrate and steady the mind so you're able to be meditative and calm in all of your activities. So ready to get started? Here we go. Come to a comfortable seated position and we're going to start off today nice and easy. Cross your right knee on top of the left and align your knees forward so the knees, your pubic bone, and your sternum are all in the same line. Then grab your feet and point your feet. All right, so you're going to align yourself all the way forward. Settle your hips in between your feet and then we're going to fold forward into the hip joints. So take the hands right up above the head to open the shoulders as you inhale, controlling and coordinating the breath with your movement. And then as you exhale, just bend down and drop your head a little bit down. So you should feel as you do this some deep movement in your left hip joint because that's the one that's on top. Let your head hang down and let yourself breathe as deeply as possible. So this posture is a modification of Gomukhasana, which is a Sanskrit word for the cow posture. So we're leaning into the hip joints again, getting that deep openness in the pelvis. Then let's come all the way up and we're gonna combine that with the shoulders. Since the left leg is on top, you're gonna take that left arm up behind your head and this is help opening the tricep. And when you stretch a muscle, it has to be real strong at its upper limit. So first, just to warm up, take that elbow and pull it in and just gently look up, dangling your left hand back behind you and then wrap your right arm up, gliding your fingertips towards each other and interlace your fingers behind your neck. Then inhale and look up, squeezing your fingers towards each other and looking up. You should feel some nice juicy kind of sensations in the right deltoid as it inwardly rotates and moves forward and let that left armpit really open as you look up to the ceiling and let your chest really rise up above. So this really helps the energy come right into the body. It's a nice easy warm up for back bending and then gently let go of your hands and come back to the center. Then we'll do it again for the other side. So take that right arm up in the air, find the right tricep and let it elongate, hold on to your elbow and move it over. Okay, let's just stay here nice and easy and we're just setting up the posture. Dangle your fingers back behind you and then take the left shoulder, roll it forward and then wiggle your fingers towards each other. Find your fingers and clasp them together right behind your head. Keep your belly sucked in, point your toes and then inhale and look all the way up. And if you're feeling, again, any muscle tension in your left deltoid, it's going to feel much better after. And the deltoid's that upper arm muscle right there on the left side. Gently pull the right elbow back. It's opening the tricep, opening your chest, and then gently release the fingers. Good. Now, we're ready to move on to the same exercise, the cat-cow exercise that we did from last time. So uncross your legs and 
come up onto your hands and knees. And it's okay that we only did the left side on top because it was just really about the shoulders anyway. So now come onto your hands and knees just like we did last week and press through your hands. Keep the fingers pretty close together. Don't spread them too wide apart. Inhale, let's extend the spine and look all the way up. And when you do this, you want to press into your hands. This is just a nice, easy release. So soften, release, but strengthen at the same time. And then exhale, press through the arms, sucking in the belly and feel your back all the way around and then inhale lift the spine let it be into a nice extension so you want to let this be easy and relaxed while the belly sucks in and then exhale pull your rib cage in and press through the arms good we're gonna do that one more time inhale so this should be pretty familiar we went over this last week this is a nice easy warm-up taking the spine through extension which is where we are now moving the spine all the way through extension or, or flexion <laughs> tucking under the tailbone and you want to use your abdominal muscles right so this is that balance between strength and flexibility now from here just like we did last week step your toes back come up to that nice plank position and then exhale bend your elbows to Chaturanga Dandasana, lower down. And if this is real hard on your arms, you're welcome to put your belly on the ground, but try to stay up because it'll make you real strong. Then inhale, roll forward to that upward facing dog, and then exhale, curl under your toes to the downward facing dog. Let's stay for a few breaths in downward dog just to really open up the hamstrings. If your heels aren't on the ground, don't worry about it. Just press through the knees and suck in the belly and reach out through the fingertips. Pay attention to the sound of the breath while you suck the belly in, pulling up the kneecaps and you want to gaze right at the kneecaps. Downward dog is a great tension reliever, so if you feel tense throughout your day, just allow yourself, you know, and if you've got the space in your office, just take a nice downward facing dog for five breaths. After those breaths, okay, let's inhale, look forward, and then bend your elbows and lower back down to the ground. Easy come up onto your elbows and we're going to work that back bend, so send your rib cage forward and I want you to point your toes. Lift your kneecaps off of the ground and find your hip bones. Suck the belly in and then inhale, lift your legs. So now we're working our back muscles and you want to feel your back muscles nice and strong and engaged. So that's that area right up above the butt and right behind the rib cage, right here. You want to feel those muscles working. Now in yoga, it's totally fine. Keep your legs up, quadriceps strong, feeling any burning sensations in the muscles, totally fine. That's like cleansing. The yoga practice is all about cleansing, so keep those legs up, all right? A few more breaths like this, and then we're going to bring the legs together so you can feel the hamstrings working even more. Your upper body's nice and soft for now, not forever. Then press through the elbows and we'll really rock the rib cage forward. Take your hands back behind you and you're building some nice strength and endurance through your back muscles. If you're doing this with me, you can gaze at the tip of your nose, roll the shoulders down the back. This posture is called Shalabhasana. It's a therapeutic posture, so don't try to crank your spine deep. Just let yourself elongate. Take your hands off the ground, push your fingertips on the ground, squeeze the elbows together. Good, and now separate your feet and we're gonna go a little bit deeper. Take your hands back behind you, interlock the fingers right above the sacrum, and then inhale, lift your upper body a little bit more and let's just let the spine really elongate gaze at the tip of the nose oh your back muscles may be burning now it's okay mine are a little on fire too that's just the body getting a little bit stronger thigh muscles super straight legs and exhale go down good take your hands forward inhale roll forward to the upward facing dog and exhale roll back to the downward facing dog and if you want a little bit of a rest we can take the knees down and just come to a nice easy child's pose and that nice easy child's pose it's going to help reset the spine you might be feeling some burning sensations right back here and if you are just squeeze your knees a little bit together and round your back under to help the whole spine release and you're going to deepen that on an exhalation and then let's come all the way forward again to downward facing dog from the downward facing dog look forward and we're going to take a little hop all right so come onto your knees hop it forward and come into a kneeling position the next posture we're going to work with is called ushtrasana this is a therapeutic back bend that's going to really give you a full deep breath and it'll cleanse the inner organs and energize the whole body so yoga can be fun it can be hard work um, but more than anything it's an adventure into the inner body so remain curious and go on that inner journey especially in the next posture okay so we're really strengthening our back muscles using the power of the legs press into your legs all right i really like to 
think about the thighs inwardly rotating. So you want to spiral your thighs inward. Find your low belly and then pull the low belly inside. All right. Here we go. Find your rib cage. Inhale, lift your rib cage. It's almost like you're growing taller. I'm not such a tall person, so I always like to think about how can I get a little more length out of the spine. Lift the spine. Anyone who has any back problems or back disorders or herniated discs would really benefit from lengthening the spine. So do that on an inhale. Keep the spine nice and long. Then as you exhale, roll the elbows towards each other. Take your fingers right into the sacrum and exhale, drop your head back. Okay, anyone following along who feels uncomfortable should stay right here and not progress any deeper. Roll your shoulders forward. If you feel compression anywhere in your back, take your body up a little bit more rather than hanging down. Every posture in yoga creates space and it's only when we feel the space can we move in. Okay, so you should be feeling nice and energized, nice and relaxed. Squeeze your sides in towards each other. Dangle your hands back and place the heel of the hand onto the heel of the foot as you roll the shoulders open. We're gonna stay here for five breaths. Ustrasana is such a really wonderfully therapeutic posture. Anyone that's suffering from bone disorders like osteoporosis that force a really deep flexion of the spine can really benefit from this nice, easy therapeutic back bend. Make sure that the thighs inwardly rotate and the shoulders roll forward and that the breath is long and deep, all right? So we're feeling a nice deep inhalation and a nice deep exhalation. Make sure the belly is sucked in so that you can actually benefit from the energizing flow of the practice. I think that's been about five breaths. Now don't rush out of the posture, all right? Firm your pelvic floor, suck the belly in, firm your thighs. Inhale, take your hands to your waist. Exhale here, squeeze your knees together. And inhale, roll your spine all the way up. Now many people who don't coordinate the breath with the movement sometimes feel a little dizzy when you come up. If you're feeling that right now, you wanna put your knees together, sit all the way down, and exhale, child's pose. Well, remember, child's pose is that nice, easy, resting, relaxation position. You can always go to child's pose at any moment if you need a break. Just to balance the strength movement with the flexibility, let's see if we can actually have a nice little lift up here. This lift up is also going to help reset your sacrum and get your whole spine functioning at optimum capacity. So move your hands forward, all right? Squeeze the knees together. Press your hands down and the elbows straight. Lean forward and hold it up here like this for a moment. Press the arm straight. Lift one foot up in the air. Pull it in, roll it in. And then exhale, step back. Chaturanga Dandasana, that push-up position, lower down. Ooh, the push-ups get hard after back bend. Inhale, upward facing. And exhale, downward facing. Again, let yourself rest in downward facing for a moment. The back should be pretty open by now. Then let's look forward and inhale. Jump it forward, cross your feet, and sit all the way down. So that little movement is really good for the hips. I'm just gonna break that down for you one more time because it's not so easy for everyone. You wanna actually jump your feet to a cross-legged position like this, and then after you jump to here, you can sit down and straighten your legs. You can do that in, very, in you know, more advanced versions, but let's just try that one more time because again, it helps reset the spine after some deep back bends. Cross your feet underneath you, pull the feet close to your hips, and then lean forward like this. Roll over your shins, take the hands forward, and then lean your chest forward, Step all the way back, bend your elbows, lower down. Inhale, roll over to upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. From downward facing, step the right foot, step the left foot. Pause here for a moment. So this is that place where I'm talking about. You gotta sink down into your hips, let your hips touch your feet, sit all the way down stretch out your legs, all right? Traditionally, that's called a vinyasa, which means coordination of breath with movement. And by doing that, we actually begin to feel um, that every breath and every movement have a purpose and they're orchestrated to really help the body come into balance and the mind come into greater focus. So now let's continue our journey into some back bending, and we'll lie all the way down, all right? So lying down, we're gonna move into a simple bridge. This simple bridge should be easy and therapeutic for everyone. To start 